I'm Dr. Mike Gratisar, Head of Sleep Science at Sleep Cycle. I'm a clinical psychologist specialising in sleep disorders and I've been helping people sleep better for the past 20 years. But I haven't been satisfied with just helping people in my own hometown. Basically, I've come to Sleep Cycle to help millions of people around the world, including you. Jet lag. Most people know about jet lag, they've experienced it for themselves. You essentially take your physical body from this country and you take it over here into this other country. And it takes a while for your sleep to catch up, but you can actually experience jet lag in your own home. You can actually stay physically put where you are and your sleep can drift just that little bit. So it's in a different time zone. This is known as social jet lag. And you're gonna learn about social jet lag in this very video the key things that you need to know, and more importantly, the things you do to make it better. Social jet lag is really a minor conflict between what your body wants and what society expects of you. Say for example, one study when they surveyed a bunch of people, they found about half of them didn't actually experience social jet lag, yet the other half did, as you can imagine. Now, when it comes to what a social jet lag look like, it's really having a difference between when you wake up on the weekdays versus the weekends. So in some ways we're talking about sleeping in on the weekend. Now, as much as people like to do that, myself included, you gotta be careful about how much you do it because it can come with some consequences, even though when people are surveyed in terms of the things that they like to do, this is one of the top things on their list. But what we're going to do is teach you a couple of techniques that will help you if you choose to want to reverse that and have a bit more control, get a bit more consistent sleep and feel better. Social jet lag changes over our lives. So if you look at say between the ages of 10 to 20 years of age, our sleep starts to get later and later and it peaks around about sort of 20 years of age. That's when we have social jet lag being at its worst. Then over the decades, our sleep tends to become earlier and earlier, such that by the time you get to say 50 years of age, which is what I am, you've almost got like the sleep of a 10 year old. Now, why is this the case? Mainly because of our underlying circadian rhythm. So circadian rhythm means a rhythm of about a day. And when scientists have actually gone to measure this, the average length of a circadian rhythm is about 24 hours and 11 minutes. Now sort of think about that for a moment because we don't necessarily live by a 24 hour, 11 minute clock. We live by a 24 hour clock. So if you're trying to fit in your wakeful time as well as your sleep, it doesn't fit. It means that you're actually gonna drift 11 minutes per day. So therefore, if you sleep in, say five times over the weekday, that equates to 55 minutes. You're effectively delaying your body clock by about an hour. This is a natural process. However, you can do something about it, and we're gonna teach you those things. Two important things. One is morning light. Morning light basically puts the brakes on our circadian rhythm. It's like setting a stopwatch saying, this is when we start our day. The second one is evening melatonin, supplemental melatonin. And what that does is essentially signal to your body clock, it's time for sleep. You can use one or two of these options. It'll be your choice, but we're gonna go through those right now. Right, let's break down what happens with a sleep in. And granted, it's a very pleasurable thing to do and we should do some of it if you want, but we just gotta be a bit careful about how much. Now, when we sleep in, we have our eyes shut. And when we have our eyes shut, they're effectively in darkness. And if they're in darkness, they're not getting exposed to light. We need light to basically signal to our body clock it's time to wake up. And you don't need to do too much of this. You can just be natural, something that you can actually incorporate into your lifestyle. So say, for example, you might actually want to get outside. You want to have breakfast. You might want to go for a walk. But if you've got one of those rainy days like they get here in Gothenburg and you can't go outside, sometimes you've got artificial sources. You can turn all the lights on in the house. You can actually get light boxes. You can get LED glasses. So there's a whole range of different options. But remember, the best source is the free source and it's outside. So see if you can actually try that in the first instance.
So we can effectively use light in the morning as the brakes, really to sort of prevent our social jet lag from getting worse. Now, at the other end of our sleep, we can use melatonin. The melatonin bottles, often they'll say that you should take it half an hour before bedtime, but that's not what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to use melatonin to help us fall asleep. We're actually using it as a signal to the body clock to sort of shift our rhythm earlier. So say for example, if this is our sleep here and this hook is the beginning of our sleep and this here is melatonin, we're trying to actually hook on here and drag the sleep pattern earlier. The way we do this is to actually take melatonin about two hours before we intend to fall asleep. Then the next night, you should aim to have it earlier and earlier. So effectively what we're doing is that we're telling the body clock it's time to fall asleep earlier and earlier. So we have two options. You've got light, which is free, and definitely you should try it. But you've also got a second option, which is supplemental melatonin. So give it a go. With about half the population experiencing social jet lag, we know this is a big topic. And when it comes to sleeping in, by no means am I saying you cannot sleep in. It's a nice thing to do. You just gotta be careful about how much you do it. And when it comes to controlling social jet lag, at least now you know that there are two easy ways of trying to control it. One is available to you freely, morning light, and the other one is supplemental melatonin. And when it comes to light and melatonin, there's so many questions that people have about it. So come and visit our website where we detail a lot more information. We try to answer your questions and reach out to us on our socials as well so we can actually answer them directly. Like, where did I leave that bottle of melatonin? <laughs>